Hello! Today I'm looking at a camera in this stripy box. This is a Cadex Rattel camera, which I've heard good things about, and it's described as a starlight camera, so you've got to think that it does great in low light. Uh, and getting out of the box, it looks like this. It's kind of, I mean, I'm so used to handling micro cameras at the moment. Um, it's sort of standard size, it's quite small. It's got a 1.66 millimeter lens. You can get the 2.1 mm lens, but this is the 1.66 version, and it looks well, it doesn't look any different to normal, really. It's very lightweight. Um, it's got its own um, OSD, and you can set up the camera through that. So there's that bit, there's the sort of quite standard little connectors at the back there. Also in the box is the little joystick adapter for doing the actual changes, a mount to, to put it onto something, and then some cables and some screws and a little Allen key to actually get it mounted up. Now, obviously, we need to install this on something to see how it looks. Um, I don't do an awful lot of night flying, so I, I'm interested to see how it flies during a normal day, perhaps some dark and stuff, but I'll have to take it out at night just to see exactly what this starlight sensor can do. Okay, well, I've got the little Rattel installed in this quad here. You might recognise this as what used to be a nebula. It's now my general test bed. Whenever there's any sort of change to do, it goes on this one. Um, fitting it wasn't too easy and I'm not using the standard mount here because I've got such a large amount of space uh, in this gap but fortunately this is actually from a Cadix Turtle which fills this gap out nicely and then the camera sort of sits in there and I've got the ability to at least move it. What I've also done here is I've connected up the joystick adapter because I just thought we'd go through some of the options we've got there so I'm going to do this now. Okay, well, there you go, there's my hand waving. So we'll do uh, a couple of things here and we'll have Pickle Rick ready just in case we need to uh, get any footage to check on. It's going to pop the lens cap on and I've got a switch on my radio just to turn off the OSD so I can see a bit more. We've got it on the TrueD. Let's have a look at the menu here. And we've got our main menu, exposure. I don't really know what any of this means or does. White balance is auto. Day and night is. I don't know what EXT means. EXT, auto, colour, black and white. I actually generally like colour. Image enhance, contrast, sharpness, digital noise reduction. Video settings, uh, PAL. Now it doesn't really say what sort of sensor um, this is. I'm assuming it, the fact you can switch it from NTSC to PAL means it must be a CMOS sensor. Yeah, I don't think you can switch video type or, um, or resolution on a CCD sensor. Now I'm just gonna I want to check what happens if we change the aspect ratio. So I'm just looking at the extensor screen I've got there. If I change it to 69, nothing seems to happen. Now I'm watching this in 69 goggles. What does that mean? It's nothing changes, or, or what? I do not know. Why dynamic range is open or closed? I guess we want open. Language reset, save and exit. Right, now I'd actually assume this had come with the normal sort of voltage display, etc., on the OSD as well. Um, but there's no option to go into that, so that doesn't exist, which is, I mean, it, it don't need it. Um, I just got used to having it, so that doesn't have it. And what it looks like you've got there is a fairly well set up camera, basically um, wide dynamic range is on, I'd change night mode to colour, although I might experiment with that if we take it out at night. Uh, but yeah, we're ready to give this uh, a fly and see how it goes now. Let's check it out. Okay, so here we are for a test. It's on this quad, as you know, and we're in this field, uh, famous as a sort of starlight camera and it's nice bright sunlight the sun is out we can shine into it see how it does in this sort of condition uh, before we actually test it in darker light okay so we're up in the air and i've got to say i was 
immediately blown away here. I mean, if you want to have a quick check, rewind the video at just a, a little sec to see me talking, and that is the GoPro, uh, that's the GoPro 4 Silver, and one would expect the GoPro to have pretty good color settings and have the brightness and everything. And if you look at this in comparison, it is quite similar. Um, and I was like really looking for faults here because I know Cadex in the past there's been sort of a red tinge, especially on the EOS cameras. There's, they, they've oversaturated a little bit uh, to make everything a bit more colourful. But I've sort of looked at the colours and I'm like, well, this looks, this looks right. This looks how it should be. This may be very subjective, but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, this is this is pretty amazing, I have to say. And to put it into perspective, the quad I flew just after this was um well it, it had a foxier micro arrow in which previously has has been one of my favorite cameras and that looked a little bit um washed out in comparison i have to say now you know i didn't mess around i i smacked this camera into some leaves a couple of times just to make sure it was tough enough to to handle it and it did I am just super happy with this. I really did expect to sort of see a massive fisheye effect on a 1.66 millimeter lens. And if you look to the edges of the DVR, you, you can see there's there's a curve to it. But flying it and looking in the center, you, you really don't see. You just see a lot of detail all around yourself, which is really fantastic for flying. So I'm always a little bit hesitant to throw around declarations of, you know, how good I think things are in comparison with anything else. Because at the moment, I've just flown it in this one sort of situation where it's really nice weather. But this this is simply the, the, the best looking detail I've got out of an FPV camera so far. I mean, I've, I'm pretty sure it's CMOS because of, of the things that the props do and the fact you can change from PAL to NTSC and allegedly the um, aspect ratio, although that didn't seem to do anything for me. But to say this is CMOS, it's getting um, amazing footage, frankly. There's there's no noise there. It's, I, it might be a little bit oversaturated, but you can tune all that down. But the, just the fact that the color's coming out very true, the image is stable, and it's just lovely. I love it. Wowzers. One decent thing about that wide angle is even poking up at quite a hefty amount of degrees, you can bring it in for landing. I mean, you, you still need to be reasonably careful bringing in. You can't see the floor detail all the way, but, you know, it's no hassle picking out your landing spot. Wow, are my words on this one. Just wow. I'd love to show you more and more footage of it because I think it's fantastic. Well, it's 10.30 at night, and I'm gonna try going outside with this little gun. It's fairly dark out there, and as soon as I turn this light out, you'll be able to see. I say fairly dark, because there's a couple of street lights, which get a little bit of ambient light, because I don't think it's gonna do anything in pitch black, but with a little bit of ambient light, we'll see. But I'll turn this one off now, and we'll see what we can see. Uh, hopefully you can see something, maybe not much, but let's pop outside quick. Okay, we're outside, we've got a street light up there. As you see, it's darker over this way, so we can explore around, see what we've got going. So I'm going to turn stuff on. Wow, that, that is much brighter than I thought. If I uh, turn the camera and show you what the camera sees versus what the squad sees, that is actually quite crazy. Now I set this to colour mode. Um, I didn't actually expect it to... Uh, let's just see where my feet are. I didn't actually expect to get this amount of colour. I mean, it's quite noisy, and I'm I'm sure you could get much less noise by turning that off. Let's go to the really dark, dark areas of the garden over there. See what we've got happening. So I can I'm actually walking around just in my goggles here. So as we get whoops closer to here, you can see a lot more noise. This might be interesting to try it with um, the black and white mode. Let's see what happens. Can see that's that's the gate. It's somehow it's showing up in colour. I can't believe I can actually navigate around here in the dark. This uh, this is really weird. Quite crazy that we can see actually so much. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can't see very well where I'm going at the moment, but <laughs> I can see a hell of a lot more than I thought I'd be able to. 
this is actually uh, mental how much I can see and the fact it's in colour. Wow. I mean, it looks like it's really, really bright. <laughs> and I am basically moving around. Hopefully I've got this point of living correctly. I'm actually moving around in like a really dark environment. And it looks really, I mean, it looks really like it. It looks like it's floodlit, but if I take the goggles off, yeah, I'm in pitch black. Well, not pitch black, but really black. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it to black and white mode, see what happens. Okay, so I don't expect this to be any clearer, but I expect it to be less noisy, potentially. So let's have a look where we're going. There's my feet. And uh, we'll try and film the same way as the quad. See what happens. So, I mean, a lot of the detail is actually lost. I mean, I might prefer colour. I'm not sure about the frame rate on this. Yeah, they get a bit of smearing, don't you? In the darkness, but I can see colour on myself. That's just crazy. But yeah, look, I mean, look at, you can see my shoulder sort of getting left there. It's like almost memory. If I compare that to colour, colour better. You don't see any of that. Well, there you go. That has been a really weird test of, um, of this night mode. I'm going to have to try and fly in it at some point. Not this time. But yeah, we'll have to do something. Wow, I was not expecting that. I thought, yeah, let's check this camera out. It should be all right. T to me, it looked like the best camera I've used. And I've gone back through my footage. I've looked at previous cameras I've been using and this just looks amazing. And I keep going back because I'm like, I must be missing something here. It can't, it can't be that amazing, can it? it maybe it was just the conditions. So I open it up to you guys. This is what I took. I, I, I took video during uh, quite a nice day and you can see that. I did some night mode stuff and in that night mode you can see that black and white didn't seem to work very well but colour seemed to show up a lot of, uh, quite a lot of light. Now I should point out that if you've ever used a GoPro in semi-darkness you know that it doesn't pick up much. So that pitch blackness was not what was out there. The naked eye can pick up more detail than that, but the camera is picking up much more than my naked eye could, so that that is impressive. So one of the things I do want to do is go out and try and fly it in um, some sort of dark but ambient light, because if it's pitch black, it, it can't get anything. It, it can amplify the light it's got, but if it's got nothing, you're, you're not gonna see anything. So that's one flight. But I'm happy to take on uh, suggestions, because I keep thinking, it, it can't be this good, um, I've missed something. And I don't want to come up here and say, this is the best camera ever, buy it, if it's not. But to me, it, it, it does seem that way. Um, but we shall continue investigating. Is it the best? I, it seems to be, and well, until the next one comes along. But um, yeah, if you've got a, a type of flight or a type of condition, you think this will sort of challenge this camera, let me know what it is. And if that sort of condition comes up here, I will try it. You know, we haven't got, a glacier outside or anything to fly in but we get lots of dim days uh, as well because we're in the UK although a, a, a plethora of heat wave or a plethora of sunny days at the moment bizarrely uh, but yeah I, I really love this this <laughs> this is unexpectedly fantastic as far as I'm concerned but we will continue and I will update if I find anything different anyway this has been uh, the Cadex Rattel camera my new favorite camera um, and if you'd like to buy one and I'd really strongly suggest you check it out if you're in the market for a camera there are links down below this got supplied for review from banggood so thanks to them well i hope that's been helpful and i will catch you in the next video bye for now well you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching if you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel